All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Road to 18 Inch Arms, episode 23. So we're getting pretty close at this point. On Thursday of last week, which was the 6th, if I remember correctly, I ended up hitting 17.91 as a morning measurement uh, for my arms, and obviously that's that's a PR. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're getting close to the end, and now it's kind of, uh, it really is kind of that final push. So uh, before I get into the video for today, uh, I do have a couple just updates on my arm training, and I also have a handful of questions, a little bit less than usual today. I do just want to give a reminder for Boost Camp, which is uh, a new sponsor of the channel. I have a free upper lower program on there. All you have to do is download the app and sign up. Use the code BASEMENT to support me and the channel. It goes a long way. Uh, and then from there, you'll have access to my free upper lower program. And uh, if you do have a premium subscription, whether you have it already or you get it down the road, you can uh, you can find my push-pull legs push-pull program, which is roughly what I'm running myself. Uh, it's an upper body, specifically arm specialization, but it covers all the boxes. It's just a little bit more minimalist for the lower body training, which is, in my opinion, kind of a worthy uh, sacrifice if you really do want to prioritize the upper body and get that kind of old school silver era look like I love. I also want to give a shout out to Barbell Apparel. Always keep me looking good. All my favorite clothes, favorite colors. It's the best fit. These are the best gym clothes I've ever had, period, and that's why they're always going to be a sponsor of this channel. With that being said, you can shop my collection. Everything I wear in every single video of mine you can find in my collection, uh, which is in, I think it's the second link in my description. Yeah, either way you'll see it just says Barbell Apparel. So with that said, a couple updates on arm training. Everything's going about as expected. Uh, preacher curls, JM press, slowly increasing in terms of numbers right along with my arm measurements. Uh, exercise selection is still roughly the same. The preacher curls and JM press are really the meat and potatoes. Then I'm doing a mix of cable curls, Bayesian curls, and incline pushdowns. I don't have a good enough setup in my basement in my personal experience to get a quality overhead extension in, so I'd rather use that volume, train the long head in a shortened position with those pushdowns, and just make sure I hit it properly. The JM press probably won't train the long head quite good enough, so I think the pushdowns are going to be my meat and potatoes until I can get a seated stationary bench and do easy bar overhead extensions. Uh, there's really not a whole ton else I can do that works well for me. The cable stuff... Not a huge fan of, it's a great lift, uh, cable over at extensions that is, but for me personally, uh, it's never felt quite right. I feel like I hit major sticking points there. So um, that's basically it for arm training. Uh, arm size is going really well. Arm training is very straightforward, at least if you've been following the series for a while. So let's get into some questions uh, from the Instagram story. First question, has there ever been a period of time where you were rarely able to work out or lift because of life slash work? So this is a kind of a unique question. I would say there's really only been one time where it couldn't work out as a stretch, but it became a lower priority for me. And I took about, it was probably about five months in total off. And this is when I was in my early 20s and got my first like real full-time job. When I was, uh, right when I graduated high school up until I think I was about, 21 kind of like turning 22 i worked as a trainer so it was like a mix between a part-time and full-time job you're kind of just training clients at like very random times throughout the day kind of spending all day in the gym lifting at some point whenever you have a pocket of time so it's a very unique schedule um not something i personally liked very much uh, it was just more of like the concept of training that i enjoyed and i think that's why i moved to uh having like a regular day job and just doing youtube for like my hobby um, obviously I've moved past that at this point. I'm very grateful and fortunate for that, but, uh, I definitely prefer doing this and more so like presenting my thoughts and articulating them the best that I can and just creating like a log of, um, of my thoughts and training philosophies. And I think not only just having that for myself, but being able to share that and, and read people's comments and stuff really is an enjoyable process to get back to the question. I would say, uh, that period of time when I had my first full-time job, I was working, it was nine hour shifts, four days a week, and then like half days for two days a week. So it was, I was in the gym six days a week. I lived in a winter rental at the time. So I live up north and a lot of the time people uh, rent, they, they do, when they rent, they rent out in the winter for nine months, then they'll do like three or four months in the summer roughly. And they do weekly rentals, very expensive there. Uh, so I was living there with Miss Basement and I was commuting 45, 50 minutes to my work there and back. So it was 10, 11 
plus hour days most of the week and I just couldn't justify lifting. Like I was in the gym all day um, and I really did, did not want to stay in the gym any longer. And of course I was renting at that point so I couldn't really build a, a proper home gym. So uh, it, I, I was just burned out from the gym anyways but I'd say the, the bigger reason why I wasn't um, lifting at that point consistently is I was completely burned out of lifting culture. I hated it so much. I was so wrapped up in Instagram and that that was this is like kind of before TikTok really. Um and I'm kind of grateful for that. But Instagram was just the definition of uh narcissism. And it, it, it kind of still is to an extent, but it, you just get so sick of it and it's like your entire explore page or anyone that you're even interested in following is just completely vain and narcissistic and it just it just makes you kind of bitter like especially coming from a team sport uh, in hockey where everybody kind of is well yeah focused on yourself and bettering yourself but you're a team and you're kind of focused on each other i felt like the lifting community was just so so kind of narcissistic and focused on themselves uh didn't care about anyone else and you could tell by just the the lies and the manipulation in their pictures and uh almost like faking their lifts in some weird ways uh and it just got me completely kind of kind of black pilled overall and this is at the same time where people were, were talking about how you can't get big naturally uh, i was watching all of these like intermediate natural lifters on youtube or instagram or whatnot that really trained decently but didn't really know how to uh, go far and this is where i thought that someone that was an advanced natural lifter was probably on gear and it was kind of a sad state to be in but i thought when i was yeah like 2021 20, i'd kind of hit my natural limit um and in my my numbers kind of like backed that up in my head um because not a whole ton of people were were putting up bigger numbers than me and everyone was like at the time it was just so different back then like it, it's hard to explain to newer lifters or if you weren't really caught up in that whole lifting community on instagram or whatnot but yeah it was like oh well once you can squat bench deadlift three four five plates like you're probably at your natural limit like you can probably get a little stronger but you're not getting bigger and it was just it was a kind of a doomer mindset and it really sucked and it, it just sucked the life out of lifting for me so i took time off got back into it in the home gym my own on my own and just started fresh i didn't have a program i didn't do anything i just eased back into it and really started to just focus on enjoying my training and i, I tried to encapsulate that mindset that got me into lifting in the first place when i would uh go to work in the morning in the summer i'd work like eight to two at a little market and then uh I would just go, I'd, I'd, I was so excited to go lift every day. And I feel like the fitness industry kind of stole that from me in a way when I was younger. So I don't know if that would happen to someone older, or if, if that same thing would have happened to me now. But as a kid, it kind of just takes, uh, it takes the joy out of it when you're surrounded by, I guess, crappy people to put it lightly. Um, so I, I did my best to kind of regain that, that approach and focus on the things that I cared about, which was bodybuilding arm training. I don't care about competing. I don't care, care about my strength, power lifts, anything like this. I just did what I want to do and did it how I wanted to. And that's the the philosophy that started to build the foundation of what this channel's become. So it's been, um, it's been an interesting kind of mental evolution where I feel like I started really strong, got sucked into nihilism, and then uh, took time off, which is right at that five month period when I was in my early 20s. Um, and then kind of rebuilt from there. And I feel like I'm the strongest uh, mentally that I've ever been as far as like thinking for myself and, and lifting and everything goes. And I know that might, this this question turned into something a little bit more extreme. And I, I've talked about this before a really long time ago on the channel. So for new lifters, you might, or not new lifters, <laughs> new viewers, uh, you might be like, all right, well, what's this whole story? What are you talking about? It's just um, my experience with the mainstream fitness industry. And I, I really am not a huge fan of that. So uh, let's see, got another minute or two. I could extend the video if I, if I want to, which I, which I usually do quite a bit. So we'll see. I'll try and go through the rest of the questions. Uh, next question. <laughs> this is a very unique one. Um, a TRT and inferiority complex in early 20s. So I don't know if he's saying that he has that or if he just sees it being very prevalent in the industry. I would say this is this is exactly the people that I was running into uh, when I was at this age. Um, yeah, like I said, when I was in my early 20s, a lot of people uh, 
fake natties taking TRT, saying they're natural <laughs> in their early 20s is just insane. Uh, inferiority complex, yeah, yeah, I would say there's kind of a mix of that and a superiority complex taking over the fitness industry. The fitness industry is just weird, man. Like, the mainstream, I mean, I'm really not a fan of it. I think our little niche corner, uh, channels like mine, I, I think we do a good job, and obviously, um, I'm going to be biased because I obviously make my own content and I think it's good, but there's something, there's something unique and there's something special about underground, no pun intended, channels. And it, it's, I think it's just the fact that it's community oriented. I'm going to post all sorts of stuff about myself, talk about myself and whatnot, but it's always for other people to kind of learn what I'm doing. And it's for me to inspire other people more than it is for me to say like, look what I'm doing and I want you to like my posts and uh, give me followers so I can, I don't know, feel good about myself or whatnot. Next question, do you feel like you're missing out by not having any sort of incline curl in your program? So a uh, little bit of a change of pace here, but I, I actually do have a Bayesian curl in my program, so that technically is an incline curl. I wouldn't say I feel like I'm missing out. Um, I... I, I did incline curls for quite a while. <sighs> That's a stretch. It wasn't quite a while, but it was probably two, three months um, around this time last year. And my my arms didn't grow a whole ton from them. Um, not as much as, as preacher curls have grown my arms, but at the same time, I've been doing those for much longer. So, of course, there's just more... Um, more room for growth with that. This isn't to say like incline curls aren't going to grow you or anything, but I just found that preacher curls were a staple that worked really well for me and they align perfectly with my philosophy of resistance profiles and training in general. So preacher curls are kind of my go-to. Uh, I don't feel like I need to have everything at all times in my program, but I do keep Bayesian curls in there and uh, th those are interchangeable with incline curls in my opinion. Uh, the difference for me is I have big chunky Olympic dumbbells and I have to keep them way out to my sides if I'm doing incline curls since they're just massive. Uh, and and where, where I'm using the cable, I can uh, I can obviously just use the smaller handle so I can keep my elbows and, and wrists tucked a little bit more. It just feels a little better, easier to set up too. Uh, next question, best length and bias lifts for rear and lateral delts. So I'm actually not a massive fan of training the rear delts, specifically in a length and range of motion. Um, I will expand a little bit more on this i actually have a video coming out it should be coming out on wednesday uh which is just a completely new uh video style that i i, I think you guys will like um it's very long format and i think it's something that the original subscribers of the channel will appreciate most uh, but i do think any newer viewers could potentially like it too um but yeah, I'd say the more the more familiar you are with my channel and myself, then I think the more you would appreciate it is what I'm trying to say. Rear and side delts. Uh, rear delts, I'm going to expand in that video. But to, to put it simply, I would say when I try and train the rear delts in a lengthened position, I feel the traps in the scapula just moving and taking over so much of the movement. Uh, and I, I personally prefer to train rear delts in a shortened range of motion. A very personal experience in that regard. Uh, I would say side delts. A cable side raise where the cable origin is set up at wrist height when you're standing with your arms relaxed by your sides or even a lying side raise those are both excellent lifts uh, a lot of people say it's mostly the rotator cuff working at that longer length but i in my personal experience i feel the side delt quite a bit uh, and there's just something that feels way more natural about a length and bias lift in general so i'd say that that lift ends up working really well for rear delts uh, i prefer training them in the short position so i'm not going to give a uh, a lengthened position in, in my personal recommendation uh next question when's the road to boulder shoulders coming in i'm not sure i'm really not sure there's a couple different series i'm contemplating right now I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. Part of it's going to depend on the diet. Like if, if I'm going to cut, I can't really do a road to 19 inch arms unless I do it in like a very long term thing. But of course, if I cut my arm measurements are going to start to go back down again. It's just, it's, it's almost anticlimactic. It's like, it would be cool to start that on a bulk again. I think it's more exciting for the viewer. And I think it's, it's more motivating for myself too. It's like, I don't know if I'm cutting and there's not a whole ton of muscle to be built as far as like the actual measurement goes, uh, it's, it's not too exciting. But I, if I just do like road to, um, 
road to like a bigger back or something. I could probably still build a little bit of muscle on the cut, and I think the back will just look better, even if like my torso measurement shrinks, uh, if I was to cut. So something like that would work a little better. I also have a, a series that is outside of that domain in a way. Um, it, it's nothing crazy, but it, this is the series I was kind of hinting at earlier that I'm going to re release like a, uh, like a sample, not a sample, I guess like a trial episode just for fun with minimal editing, um, on Wednesday, most likely. So next series will probably start, it will probably start shortly after the road to 18 inch arms ends. I'm probably going to do the road to 18 inch arms, take some time and reflect, make a conclusion video to that. And then I might start something else immediately, depending on if I decide what I want to do, or I might take my time and just figure out exactly what that series is going to be. I'm open to ideas from the comments. I do want to make sure it's something that I personally want to do, because that's when my excitement and my passion for it kind of shines through. Uh, so I am one of my philosophies is like, you have to pick what you want to do and go from there. Don't let other people decide your goals. So I'll make a decision, uh, kind of just a matter of, of time, of course. Uh, and I think this is, yeah, this is the last question. So, oh no, I started on that question. So that's all for today. If you guys have any questions or anything else, uh, anything else, uh, any like questions or anything you want to see me answer in the next episode, let me know. Uh, keep an eye out on my Instagram stories for another poll potentially. And yeah, if you don't have Instagram or don't follow me there, just leave a question in the comments here and I'll keep it in mind. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.